Good morning and welcome to Junior Church, August 22nd. Now we have been studying about Moses, his birth, God communicating to Moses, and what God's plan was for him. We know that with Aaron, Moses went to Pharaoh and told him to let the Israelites go, but Pharaoh didn't want to let them go. Maybe because of all the work the Israelites did, and Pharaoh wouldn't have any workers, to, or maybe because he was just the Pharaoh. What we do know is that after eight plagues, he still kept changing his mind. The last plague was that the firstborn of everything would die if Pharaoh didn't change his mind. I just believe that Pharaoh didn't believe this could happen. But this is what happened. Moses told the Israelites to put the blood of a lamb over the doorway to their house so that the death would pass them by. And this is where we get the word Passover from. Well, after the death of Pharaoh's son, he told Moses to take the Israelites and leave Egypt. He was just, he was grieving for his son. He said, just leave, take them all. And they were in such a hurry that they couldn't even wait for their bread to rise. They ate the bread, they call it leavened bread, because it didn't rise. And they even asked some of the Egyptians if they could give them the gold and silver so that that would help them when they go to the silver land. So they were all ready to go, and they left. And then the Pharaoh started thinking again, and he changed his mind. He sent all his soldiers after them. Well, Moses could see the, it, the Egyptians coming, and the Israelites were starting to panic because they were coming close to the Red Sea. They didn't have any boats to get across, and they just knew that they were all going to die. Some of them said they would better to have stayed in Egypt. At least they would be alive. But God told Moses to take his rod and pass it over the Red Sea, and it opened up. It left a path for every one of those Israelites to get to the other side. And when the Egyptians got there, and Moses was on the other side, he just waved his rod again, and the water came together, and every one of those Egyptians drowned. Now, you would think that the people would be happy, that they were saved, but like any other people, once they kept going about their business and they traveled, they started to complain again, and really, that was starting to get on God's last nerve. I know we don't think God has a lot last nerve, but I'm sure some of your mothers have said to you, no, you're getting on my last nerve. Well, this is what was happening. And really, God really took care of the people. They wanted water, and he made some way for them to get water, and then they complained about they needed food, and then they got the food. God really took care of them. So one day, God told Moses he wanted him to come up to the mountain because he wanted to talk to him. And he told him, before you come up, he said, I want you to bathe, I want you to change your clothes, he said, I want everything clean about you. He said, because you're going to be on holy ground. And he says, all the other Israelites are not to come up to the mountain, they have to stay down below, and I want all of them to be clean also. So Moses did what God said, and he went up, and God told him that he had ten commandments. These were the things that God wanted the people to follow. This was their, going to be their way of life. And Moses was up there for a while, and then by the time he came back, here the people had started back to their old ways. They were worshiping idols and making idols, and Moses was just so angry that he threw those Ten Commandments down and they broke. I can imagine how Moses must have felt. He was up there, and he was trying to do the best for his people, and there they were just backsliding. So he went back up to the mountain again and this time he came back with the Ten Commandments and he gave them to the people. And this is the way they were supposed to have their lives go. And God told Moses, he said, because of the people always complaining, there are only two people over the age of 20 that would see the promised land. All others would be children that the Israelites had. I bet you don't know who those two people were. Or they were Joshua and Caleb. Even Moses didn't get to see the promised land. 
God's power is revealed in us so many ways. No one but God could part a sea. God also does many powerful things for us every day. He brings the sun up in the morning. He showers the earth with rain and makes the trees grow, also the grass and our gardens. He even created gravity to keep us from accidentally flying into outer space. I bet you never thought about that. Well, next Sunday, we will be studying the Ten Commandments. So now let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for always being there for me. Thank you for the times I am fearful, but knowing that you care for me makes me feel safe. I ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen.